And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone, to Progressive Discussions. Another week has flown by. We're back. Naturally, we're back because you see us. You know? Okay. But we're a little disturbed. Yeah, let me, I'm trying to debate what to, let me get my antioxidant rich tea. It, uh, this week it is uh, green tea with peppermint uh, from my favorite, uh, my the Polish market piaz where I get the smoke kielbasa freshly made. I got five pounds of it the other day. Mm. And I got, uh, with the teas from Poland, I got 30 bags for less money and the American companies like Lipton, Bigelow, they only, they only give you like 20 bags, 16. some of them less. But mm. I got a whopping 30 bags. Great value. You got you got to love Northern Europe for giving you a great value for the money, aside from having the, the most ideal system known to man, democratic socialism. So let me... Salute, and they deserve it, Northern Europe. My lucky Blackthorn Shillelagh. Now, speaking of democratic socialism, <laughs> we now know that Americans will never vote for change. Well, they, they are afraid of change. They like to cry. The adaptive supporters. Adaptive supporters. Americans love to cry. They love to complain. They love to do it in person, and they love to do it on social media, and they love to show show off how intellectually intelligent they are. All the high IQ progressives that you know give their take on everything in, that goes on in the world and in America and they're very long-winded too. Wah, 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 wah. First question, do you vote? Because if you don't, I don't want to hear you. You have well, no right don't to complain. Vote for Sanders. Okay, if you vote, if you vote, are you voting with the same intelligence that you show off with on social media? Aha. It's really common sense. You don't have to be a genius to some uh, uh, to uh, figure out who who has your best interest at heart. Now, if you vote for the person who has your best interest at heart, is your vote actually being counted, mm -hmm. or or is it like those uh, what is it two or three million uh, provisional ballots in California that were never counted? Two million, I think. I think they're still counting in California. I heard some of the counties flipped over to Sanders. Some of the California county, a handful of them. Well, they may find that out. You but know? this this gets back to what I what infuriates me about mainstream media, particularly the mainstream media that used to be progressive. MSNBC, Chisler's Hall of Shame, will begin with. MSNBC, the whole entire team and and network management, shame on you for calling Hillary the projected winner uh, way too early. Okay, I guess that could be a little voter suppression psychology on their part. 
to get you to say if you're a knucklehead and you I, just yeah I got to vote for a winner man I got to vote for a winner. well not only that um, not winner. only that well vote for a winner well, well, well who wins at the end when you vote for the wrong winner <laughs> not you maybe the rich but you know it might get people not even to bother oh my my person is not the projected winner I won't go yeah, there you go so that's voter suppression right there but uh, you know yeah shame on MSNBC shame of course shame on the corrupt DNC that rigged the whole thing uh, so now that we're on politics because I was gonna uh, start off with something else but we'll, let's stick to politics mm -hmm. number two chiseless all the shame but this didn't surprise me President Barack Obama has endorsed Hillary Clinton uh, naturally he's a corporatist establishment Democrat um, doesn't doesn't really shock me considering the fact that Hillary <laughs> badmouthed him non-stop when he ran against her in 2008 okay but then he forgave her and gave her a job and all that but anyway yeah now shame Chisler's Hall of Shame number three is the biggest of all probably the last progressive Democrat to exist has sold out to the establishment and endorsed Hillary Clinton and that is the long goosenecked Elizabeth Warren mega shame on you for selling out Bernie Sanders that I thought you were right behind and for she sold out to the establishment she has joined the establishment uh, demon crat um, gang and uh, she sold out and I can't think of anyone else in the Democratic Party that um, even comes close to the honesty and integrity and 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 the uh, sincerity of a Bernie Sanders. I think that's it. I think Elizabeth Warren was she, was the last hope in the in the Democratic Party. She went after Trump the other day, really good. Oh, uh, I'm not going to give her any kudos. I heard, I I watched it. Of see? course, MSNBC. MSNBC played the whole Elizabeth Warren speech. Of course they gave her lots of face time. She's supporting Hillary Clinton. If she announced that she was supporting Bernie Sanders, you wouldn't see Elizabeth Warren giving any speeches on MSNBC. I heard it. I don't care how good she sounds. She is backing a corporate, poor, Wall Street sellout, Koch brothers sucking, you name it. Well, Establishment capitalists, brother. What they're trying to do now is unite the party to beat the Republicans. Fuck the Democratic Party. You know? Too many people are hung up on saving the, uh, one half of the uh, major two party system. It is not the party of FDR and JFK any longer. It is not. It is simply the opposite side of the same coin. Gary Knoll said the other day, I was not aware of it, but the Green Party is on all 50 state ballots. All 50 states? All 50 states. Now, he, he said Bernie should go with Jill Stein right now as a third party. Well, what is Jill Stein's agenda? I would not vote for no, Jill, they, Jill Stein for president and Bernie Sanders for vice president. No way. Well, that's well. She's been running for president, so it's got to be that way. No, no. If they join, I won't hands. vote then. I won't yeah. vote for. Her. No, that that would be that would prove that she just wants to ride Bernie Sanders' grassroots revolution coattails, and um, and and she's being uh, egomaniacal, just like Hillary Clinton. Bernie Sanders. Take it a backseat to Jill Stein, a thirty-year, a thirty-year 30 
United States Senator taking a back seat to Jill Stein and having her run for president? Fuck her. She has a chin like Gomer Pyle and she has a smile like Gomer Pyle. If she if she offers him to be president, Bernie Sanders, Vice President Jill Stein, then I would say fine, I, I'd vote for him in a flash. Well, I'll forget it then. Yeah, if, if, if she's that's not how it's cooked up. Ego, 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 maniacal. Being an egomaniac is not. Well, she hasn't look, asked it, that or done that. It, I, this was Gary. It doesn't look good, and it, it is not becoming for a female to be an egomaniac. It's more. Hey, that would be another way of getting a female as a president. It's more like uh, usually guys. Sorry, are accused of being egomaniacal, like yeah. Donald Trump. You know, usually that. Hey, I, I give kudos to Donald Trump as long as he tears apart Hillary Clinton and, and eventually makes her cry. <laughs> I give kudos to that. <laughs> I don't care. You know, I think he, I think but he, not. No fucking way is, is. Am I gonna vote if this bitch insists that Bernie Sanders has to be a vice president? Hey, no fucking way. I think he would make Bill Clinton cry before Hillary. Well, Cl Bill Clinton. <laughs> uh, 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 now, what did Bill Clinton mean that, that Bernie supporters are toast? Bring it on, Bill. Bring it on. Toast? Uh, you know what, Bill Clinton? You're lucky that the FBI and uh, Bernie Sanders' campaign um, has been so uh, nice to Hillary, your wife, because Bernie Sanders could have tore into Hillary like he tore into Alan Greenspan, mm -hmm. but he didn't because he's so afraid probably of being called a misogynist because he still has that that hipster ultra-liberalism in him. Oh, oh, I, they'll, they'll say I'm a mean, she'll play the gender card and call me a mean man uh, attacking and yelling at the poor defenseless uh, little old woman. Yeah, that, that basically it worked. She played the gender card. Who, who wants to carry the nuclear codes? <laughs> you know, yeah. amongst other things. Yeah, you know, and uh, yeah, uh, um, uh, Obama. Um, Obama can't wait. Uh, wait to get out there on the trail. Obama. The trail. You know what must have happened? Hillary must have promised. Barack Obama a real nice cushy job if he, she gets elected. If she gets elected, he's going on the Supreme Court. And maybe she he didn't get that. As long as they can get the the five, you need five more senators, Democratic senators in the Senate. Then he gets on to the Supreme Court. May, maybe Bernie didn't sweeten the deal for Barack Obama like Hillary did, Hillary Clinton. That could be it. You know, there's a lot of things behind the scene that we don't know about. Like, uh -huh. like, what is it with this uh, second private meeting between Bernie Sanders and Barack Obama recently? I don't trust these meetings that just come up out of nowhere. Of course not. You know what I mean? Uh, anything's possible, of course. Um, people that you thought were always going to do the right thing, thing can be become traitors and, Everybody and, and sell you price. out. Huh? Everybody has their pride. Well, apparently they uh, they they sweetened the deal for Elizabeth Warren, and uh, she sold out. And uh, you know, hey, you wanted to make history, uh, progressive liberals. You wanted you wanted that first black man in the White House. You got him, but he sold the little guy out, uh, Hillary. If she wins, would be the first female president of the United States. But she sold you guys out a long time ago. Unless you're rich, of course. You know, like, I mean, if you're. If it, you're an oligarch. Yeah, it's like the if old you're saying. An if you're if you're poor, they call you crazy. If you're rich, they call you eccentric. You know, you're special. When you're rich, you're treated oh, very special. Of course. The tax vacation will continue under Hillary Clinton. You, you'll only get a lousy $12 an hour minimum Maybe. wage. Maybe. 
maybe she's not promising anything no. you'll still have to pay out of pocket for your student loans so all you kids you'll be in debt for the rest of your life mm -hmm. all you Millennials uh, you won't get I don't know what the hell you I mean health care it won't be a right under Hillary Clinton so you know if you're if you're really an intellectual uh, progressive liberal I'm speaking of that you would vote for you would write in Bernie Sanders or vote for him. The yeah. Clinton health care back in the 90s when she was behind it. Yeah. It, it, people talk about it like it was universal health care. It was not. In fact, there was a provision in it in which all the uh, vitamin uh, lovers and etc. fought against because there was a provision in there to put alternative doctors in jail for what they did, you know, if, if they were going to have alternative medicine instead of allopathic. Instead of uh, 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 being so we're no a universal health care. Uh, instead of being a victim of the uh, glorified uh, legal drug dealers, uh, yeah, they would uh, mm -hmm. imprison doctors that yeah. That caused the uh, the evil, evil, greedy ones to lose profit. That's right. Uh, oh, there was an article again about the uh, the signing of the Monsanto Protection Act by uh -huh. Barack Obama, and what I said was, uh, well, uh, an evil corporation like Monsanto is now protected. Who is going to protect us? No one has <laughs> protected us for a long time. You know. Okay? Yeah. Labor Department does not protect the worker anymore. I think I think OSHA probably just goes in. OSHA is just there. That's they, it. they show up like my union uh, delegate used to show up when I had a union job at the uh, a, a, a butcher's union, which hey. was part of the Teamsters union. Union delegate would come in. He had an expensive imported Italian suit on. He had the hey. gold watch. He had diamonds. Diamond rings, he'd come in, flirt with the girls, tell jokes, tell Ooh. stories. If you had a problem, he would like excuse himself and take off. And he got 80 grand a year. I mean, you know, they're there. I mean, physically, bodily, they could be there. Well, because uh, it's just like uh, uh, Obama. Obama, Clinton, Clinton, when they were in, they hire all of these Republicans, they hire these people who are, you know, they hire somebody who is a polluter or defends polluters to be the head of the EPA. What, what do you the, think the problem is what, now with the veterans organization? Because the, the the guy on the top don't want the money spent. A representative of Mons, a former representative of, of Monsanto, now. I believe he's a senator, wrote the the Monsanto Protection Act. No kidding. And what about the FDA? Barack Obama appointed a head exactly. of the FDA that was with Big Pharma. That's what I'm saying. That's uh, what they do. Not only that, speaking about the FDA, the FDA gets 40% of its money from Big Pharma. Ah, the price you were, tell, you were yes, mentioning. Yes, everybody has their price. Million dollar man. Hey, uh, Barack Obama, um, uh, I mean, in 2008, Ralph Nader called Barack Obama and Uncle Tom. Look at that. And he got a lot of heat from the media for of doing course, that. He always gets Oh, uh, racism, heat. racism, oh, you're racist. Blah, blah. Well, like Jimmy the Greek Snyder, they, they fired him for telling the truth, a true story, that they did selective breeding back in the slave days. And they fired him for that. Uh, you know, without even investigating. Hey, they wanted the big buck, baby. The the so, the, 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 the buff buck. Hillary plays the gender card. If you're black and you have a selfish agenda and you're not all inclusive in your attitude, you'll play the race card. Uh, if it's to your advantage. Uh, yeah, he was an Uncle Tom. He 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 still is. He's a corporatist. He's, he's, he's defending the man. He's, he's sucking up to the man. The man, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Meaning the, the top, the oligarch, the top oh, yeah. 20 or 1% one, one of the 
gotten rich. Ever since Reagan, all benefits accrue to the top these days. Is this why um, uh, unions are, are quick to settle the contract? Instead if of they get a chance, instead to. of duke it out with yeah. the company, exactly, and go on strike, right? Except the union that the Verizon strikers belong to, they came out smelling like a rose. Yeah, which I have to salute them. But wait a minute, the fourth inductee was it the fourth? Let's see, o Obama, Warren. First thing that came out of my mouth was something else. Uh -huh. I did mention something else. Uh, well, the 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 next inductee into our Chisler's Hall of Shame is Verizon because I was told, I was explained that Verizon has a tendency to fire you after two years, so you don't qualify for any damn thing. You don't get any pension. Or, you know, like... Uh, Overtime. In other words, that's their way of fucking the union. To let you go, we, we no longer need your services. We are going to let you go after two years so uh -huh. they, don't, they don't have to uh, pay you any, I guess, any pension or anything that's due you. Mm -hmm. Typical corporate America, you, you suck, you're a scumbag, just like Elizabeth Warren. You're a scumbag. And uh, did I salute Ralph Nader? Yeah, all right, let me salute Ralph Nader. He's still out there doing a great job. He has a Twitter account, Facebook account. He has his own website. He writes books. Gotta love him, Ralph Nader. Ralph Nader has uh, the record for uh, uh, having the most bills and etc. ever passed. Really? Yes. Yes. But does does Ralph? But he never held office. No. He, but he forced them through somehow, some way. Well, that well, that, there is a real progressive warrior. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. Ralph Nader. Yeah. I mean, I have to admit that. Um, all right. Last, I want to. I, I I have some words to say about the gentleman. But let us have a moment of silence with seven bells. Oh, before we do, everything we discuss about politics is part of our series, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. There is the conch. Soak in that conch energy from the briny deep. All right, got that? See that conch? All right. Conchalino? Conchalini, whatever you want to call it. All right. I want to... Have a moment of silence and seven bells for the passing away of uh, uh, the great legend Muhammad Ali. Uh, he was 74 years old. Moment of silence. Reminded me of the uh, 911 bells. I'm not familiar when they, with when them. they ring the yeah they ring the bells and they they mention the names of those who were got killed. Oh yeah do, yeah yeah. They do a ceremony. Yeah right? yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> Muhammad Ali when he um, at the very beginning. Of his, uh, you know, he lost his first match. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, let's start at the beginning. You'd also know that he lost to Larry Holmes. Yeah, but he was. And then he came back. And but he was. Yeah. He was. Uh, he should have been retired when he fought Leon, Leon Spinks and Larry Holmes, and and uh, when he fought Ken Norton, he was. He was a much. He was. Um, in the in the golden years of his athletic career, but not this. I don't, I'm not going to dwell so much on his athletic career. He did stay in the boxing game longer than he should have. He, uh, but you know, but let me let me let me start my my monologue on him, and then you could you know. I'll forget. 
All right, go ahead, talk. He and George Foreman, after their match, uh, uh, you know, they became good friends. <laughs> and Ali calls George Foreman and he says, George, get a match with Ken Norton because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to go against him. He was afraid of him, I guess. Broke his jaw. Uh, Ken Norton broke Ali's jaw. Well, Ken Norton was uh, put together, man. He was put together. He was chiseled uh, like uh, like Evander Holyfield. I mean, he right. he had a physique on him. Um, uh, uh, Joe Frazier said uh, George Foreman. Smoking Joe. When he hit you, your eyes went cross. Eh? La, 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 la. Knock you in a, like like Burgess Meredith said on in the Rocky movie. He'll knock you into tomorrow, Rock. He'll knock you into tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow. That was referring to Clubber Lang, played by Mr. T. All right. Uh, go ahead. Let's, all right. A very young Muhammad Ali um, proudly represented the United States in the Olympics. Cassius Clay. I'm, I'm getting to that. Okay. Uh, boxing, represented boxing, uh, represented the United States in boxing in the Olympics, and it was very, very successful. He won a gold medal. He won a gold medal. Yes. In the Olympics, okay. A young, very young Cassius Marcellus Clay. But when the young Cassius Marcellus Clay, very happy of his success mm -hmm. in the Olympics, when he returned home to Louisville, Kentucky, he was still surrounded by terrible racism. Uh, those it, were the days before the civil rights. Right, uh, in the land. So, you know, you have a young man representing the United States in the Olympics, wins a gold medal, comes home, and is treated like, like shit. And, uh, and then he, uh, of course he was, because of this, he was a very angry young man, joined the Nation of Islam, and expressed very, very courageous young man, more courage than most Americans have. He expressed he expressed how he felt. He was very outspoken, and uh, uh, because of what he said, uh, he was very controversial, and he got a lot of heat for it. But I, uh, I don't blame the young Cassius Clay for being angry and for expressing himself and for saying what he said because he was absolutely right. He was saying, basically what all the, the people in the Civil Rights Movement were saying, you know, your Malcolm X, uh, whoever was ahead of the Nation of Islam, and so on and so forth. He was right, and, he, and justifiably so, to be angry. Got a lot of heat for it. Then he changed his name to Muhammad Ali, because he said that Cassius Marcellus Clay was a slave name, which is true, given to him by the slave owner. Okay, he's Muhammad Ali now, and then as he got older, he mellowed out and he preached peace and uh, all, you know, people coming together, being all-inclusive, and, and became of one of the most um, wonderful ambassadors of peace that the United States has ever had. And he uh, continues, they continue to throw up to his face, especially the right-wingers, they throw up to his face what he said when he was young. Now, yes, he was very angry when he was young, justifiably so, but he was right. Whatever Malcolm X had said was also right. Whatever Martin Luther King said back then was also correct. They were right to be angry, but they were accurate in what they said. So that is basically what I wanted to say. Uh, he's, he's an American hero in, in terms of who he was as a man. Uh, let's just put aside the boxing career. All right, who he was as a man and his contributions and his outspokenness and courage uh, <clears throat> makes him a true progressive warrior. And um, but to conservatives, he's a draft dodger. Oh, because he didn't want to to go to war for the rich white men, a, 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 a black, a young black man, uh, 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 the victim of racism, did not feel like going to war for rich white men. Oh, so he's a draft dodger. Mm -hmm. uh, okay.
So what did they what did they gain by by losing South Vietnam? Or if they would have won, and a Vietnam would have been one country, what what possible interest would America have there? Nothing. There was no interest when they went in there. Well, what about it Korea? Was, there was no was, interest there either, right? No, no. Uh, get rid of the old inventory and make new. Right. So, what so, did Hillary Clinton say about the Iraq War? It's a great business opportunity. So, so let's go in there, so baby. All the rich, all the the filthy uh, rich white people on top, the one percent. They all can make more and more billion, millions, billions of dollars mm -hmm. at the expense of the lives mm -hmm. of the children of uh, the poor and middle class people. Of course. So, and, and with no remorse sh shown. In other right. words, they're sociopaths. Who else fights the wars? Not the children of the rich. Well, what was the excuse, uh, a feeble excuse Donald Trump had for not going to Vietnam? It was he a had five excuses. How many? Five. Well, I think they all had feeble excuses. Janie. But he had five or seven deferments for crying out loud. Same in thing instead with of coming out and saying, I'm a rich kid and I'm better than you. And I don't want to go. And I don't feel and like and going. I don't want to go. <laughs> yeah. but so, so Ali went to prison, uh, federal prison. Uh, he was a conscientious objector, objector to the Vietnam War. And... Uh, if you go to prison, why do they why do they give it a pleasant name? They call you a conscientious objector. I don't think he went to prison. He didn't. He could have had five years, but I don't think he went to prison. Federal. He didn't go to a federal pen. Oh, okay. He All lost right. his. Uh, he lost the ability to make a living through boxing and etc. And and if he had a championship at that time, he lost it. He had a four. I think he had to forfeit his his world title. All right. Yeah. I believe that he won from Sonny Liston. Ah, uh, yeah. So that that that's, you know, for five years or so he couldn't uh, make a living. So five years, wow! Five years was taken out of his career. That's like that's like taking five years out of Babe Ruth's career. Uh huh. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? It's like. Look how many more home runs he could have had. Mm -hmm. Hey, the same thing with the uh, baseball players like uh, uh, Ted Williams went, went went to World War uh, went off to war uh, for WW two. Uh, I mean, to me, to me, super athletes like that should not have to go to war. They have to stay home and break records and set records. <laughs> That's my opinion. What about Pete Rose? Wasn't he banned? Yeah, because he, gam he gambled against. Was it against his own team? Yes. He, so he, in a sense, he was hoping his team would lose. Yeah. Uh -oh. What's that? What's well, that's that? That's what Wall Street did in the in the financial yeah. meltdown. What's that? Uh, the football player, very outspoken young black guy on the uh, Seattle Seahawks. His last name is Sherman, I think. Oh yes, uh, yeah. He made a, a statement that I liked. He says, "Why should taxpayers' money always have to pay for the for, for, the, for billionaires' uh, sports stadiums?" Yes, yeah. yep, 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 yep. And he's right about that. Yeah, that's what they do all the time. The governments. Yeah, they they, they know how to piss away your tax money. Exactly. But if you want a little bit of tax money to help you. Like a, a handful of crumbs. Yeah. Oh, they don't want to give you that. No. They don't want to give you anything. No, 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 no. That's bad. But if you're rich and you want free money, you know, got to hey. work for it, man. You got to work for you it. You got to work. Yeah, you got to work for it. Oh, like what Bill Morrow says. Uh, work for people you uh, slept. Up. People slept in cars. There they slept go. in cars. They made minimum wage, and they and they built. They built their own empire. They became self-employed. Apply yourself. Work or apply yourself. Save your Act? money. Huh? How about the Homestead Act? When the government gave away 160 uh, acres to anybody who would work it. How do you real? in your car? How do you realistically, if you're a little a little schmuck, hey, like me, if 
if you're if you're a little schmuck I need the or a little thing. putz, it's even worse. It's a little dick, right? Little prick. How the hell do you get that business loan if you are a little putz? How do you get the business loan so you can become self-made? That's the that's the question I forgot to ask Billy Morrow. That's the problem with capitalism. How the hell do you do it? Okay. You you go to get the capital because not everybody has a friend or rich. Not everybody has a rich friend or relative that's going to give you uh, uh, um, several million to start a small company uh -huh. or whatever it takes. Yeah. Not everybody's going to has that. So what do you do? You go to the bank. The bank says, you a little putz. Well, they don't say it that way. They say, uh, hey, you, you got any collateral? No. What? I got no assets. Man. You got an old late model car? You sleep in it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. no wonder. You stink, man. You don't take that many. Where do you take showers? At the YMCA? YMCA. Oh, no. You don't get the loan. You don't get the business loan. All right. You don't get the business loan. So there goes your uh, self-made pull yourself up by the bootstraps. There goes your capital. Yeah. Danny Mount capital. told me that, too. Oh, my father came to San Francisco penniless. Penis. And he worked his way up. What, he, he was an immigrant? A what? An immigrant, and we let him in this country? No, he wasn't. No, no, no. He came from he came from New Jersey. Oh. He moved to San Francisco, but he didn't have a pot to piss in. Well, and he, he and across he, the country paying gas with the car. But then he made, he was he became self-made. How? Well, he, he didn't, didn't have, have a pot to piss in. I know. Well, he so just how had, did he get self-made? He only had piss. He didn't have any... It was no money. It wasn't a pot of gold like a leprechaun. It, so, and how did he make it become self-made? He didn't, he didn't tell me that. Ah! ah da, 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 da. He didn't explain. Hey. The important part of the story. He didn't explain to me how he became ah, self-made. they never do. Well, none of them do. <laughs> they never do. None of them explain how they become self-made. I uh, started this magazine with $500. A mere bag of shells. A mere bag of shells. A mere bag of shells. Yeah, yeah. Pulling muscles from a shell. Remember that song? But anyway, yeah, how do you do it? That's the part they don't tell you. How do you do it if nobody helps you? And probably the, the only smart thing, even though she doesn't practice what she preaches, one of the smart things Elizabeth Warren said is nobody is That's totally self-made in, in America. If it wasn't for the uh, public-funded highways and byways and roads, you could not transport your goods, your product, you know, and get it to the consumer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But she was right. Unfortunately, of course she's right. She had a price. The long goose-necked woman had a price. Anyway, let us sink our teeth into these readings. I think we had a very invigorating start to our show. What do you think? Oh, I got my hair cut and I got and I colored it. I, I oh washed my the, God. I washed the gray right out of my hair. Remember that stupid commercial? I'm going to wash that gray right out of my hair. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's great. And New Jerseyans headed to the polls on Tuesday. They should be in a hall of shame, too. I saw Governor Christie on the news. He's always on the news. And in his typical bombastic and arrogant style, he declared that he had proudly voted for his good friend, Donald Trump. Of course he's going to say that. He's looking for that job, man. He wants that big job. His main reason, because this election is about winning, and Trump can win. He's good at winning. American people are going to win so much, they're going to get sick and tired of winning. Really? When did elections become primarily about winning? I thought they were about picking the most qualified candidate. Yeah, not getting more points than your opponent. Very important job. 
who best embodies the values of this great nation <coughs> and puts forth a vision for our future and a concrete plan to get us there? That's the most important, the concrete plan. Yet there was no mention of that anywhere in Christie's remarks. Or on the mainstream media. This is the sad state of today's Republican Party. A party that is more concerned about winning than electing a demagogue who has made racist and misogynist statements to the highest office in the land. And I heard Mr. Evangelical Ralph Reed today defending. Who's this? Ralph Reed! I'm not, I'm not familiar with Ralph Reed. Oh my God, he goes back to Reagan! He's an, he's an evangelical, evangelical right wing. Yes, yes. What words of wisdom did he have? He was defending Donald Trump as not a racist. What? As not really? a misogynist. Yes, yes. What did he say? Uh, 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 Megan Kelly had blood coming from every hole. No, he didn't. Say <laughs> Something that. like that. <laughs> no, you know they. You know they're 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 condemning all Muslims. For the actions of a few, uh, 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 but what I said off Extremes. the air was that, that they condemn all of Christianity. No, for the for the evil of they've wiped out out of history. Uh, for the evil of a, of a small percentage. No, they didn't do that. I mean, you can just go back to the witch time in this country, for Christ's sake. The Salem, the, the hysteria of the Salem witch hunts. Yes, yeah. witch. Where, hey, I'm, po I'm pointing to Wasserman Schultz and Hillary. Where, hey, she disappeared. Where, what happened? What? She disappeared. Wasserman? Wasserman Schultz. She she hasn't showed up for work. I think she she's in a run, you know, for her office. She's in Florida. Yeah, and somebody's uh, you know running against her. I think she didn't show up. And maybe a debate. I think or she, uh, some kind of. Meeting or I something. think they should put her on on on. A, she should make extra money by putting her on a box of Fruit Loops. Well, they want her out. They want her out after the day. After they let her do the damage she did. Yeah. I've heard countless people say they are voting for Trump because he speaks his mind. <laughs> And says what people are really thinking. But didn't Adolf Hitler speak his mind? Oh, did he? What I can accept is that Americans actually agree with his thoughts. Says what people are thinking. Gee, I wonder which segment of the population that is. Do they really believe the United States should ban Muslims from entering this country solely based on their religion? Or that people like well-respected Judge Gonzalo Curial can be deemed unfit to perform their jobs solely based on their heritage. Our founding fathers referred to America as the great experiment, one that would prove to the world that a self-governing society can uphold its values of freedom and equality. Yeah. yeah, but that went down the drain, didn't it? Yeah. Well, well there is only freedom and equality for the oligarch and the corporation. Hey, uh, immigrants, uh, e ethnic groups have come a long way. Now, now, in Hollywood, people don't pick waspy <laughs> last names anymore, uh, stage names. They use their ethnic name. They use the whole thing, you know, unless it's absurd sounding, you know, and then you have to change it. But uh, you know, they they don't they don't um, lose their ethnicity anymore. So you know, things have progressed, but Donald Trump <clears throat> wants to turn back the clock. The outcome of the 2016 election will once again put this experiment to the test. Thus, as I voted, I, without the slightest bit of hesitation, 
declared myself a Democrat and voted in the Democratic primary. I suspect and I hope I am not the only one. Well, there weren't enough of them, I'll say that. You know, don't complain, people. Don't complain on, on online. No, I don't want to hear. I don't, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear how intellectual you are. You know. Yeah. If, yeah. if you don't vote, if you don't vote, I'm not interested in your opinion. You know, even if you're a numbskull, you have to vote. And um, you know, yeah. but what bothers me. It used to bother me that people didn't vote, but what's really bothering me is that the one person, one vote, was not even counted. You and know, they keep voting the wrong way. The, 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 you know, it's like, you know... Status quo. Don't give Hillary, don't make Hillary the projected winner until all the votes are actually counted. Well, that too. That's, that's, that's the problem. It's like... You're trivializing and watering down the importance of voting. If you decide to shut the polls down early or you, you decide not to count them, them all, you know, uh, you're too lazy to count the paper ballots, for whatever well, reason. we don't have uh, accountability. When you find that stuff, and we did find it, in the uh, G.W. Bush uh, elections and etc. We found uh, things in Ohio, in Florida, etc., etc. But nobody goes to jail. The, the Gore people did not make a big stink about it. They did because not the pursue Republicans it. Because the Republicans went down there. John Roberts, the, 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 the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, he went down there. And he was the one who fought for George W. Bush. Now, if brought if, in the Supreme Court, if the if the Bernie Sanders campaign people do not bring this to the highest courts of the land, then yeah. I am going to totally lose my enthusiasm and interest in the entire American system, whether Bingo! whether it be the two-party system or the independent party system and just wait for the second coming of Christ and that's it and then that, will be a no, no party system then there'll be a no party ah. system the whole kit and caboodle I will totally wash my hands with the whole kit and caboodle I already I already believe that the career politician especially the establishment politician is nothing but a carnival snake oil salesperson yeah. that tells you what you want to hear at, for the moment at, at the mo at the moment to protect his job like a chameleon like the like the Clinton dynasty they're they're chameleons they say what they have to say in the moment no. and that's that as we Democrats once again make history disrespect and vitriol continue from the Bernie Sanders campaign. I like that word, vitriol. Sounds like a vitamin product. It is one thing to bemoan the loss of your candidate. It is another to disparage and work to delegitimize the process and therefore Hillary Clinton's soon-to-be nomination. Yeah, projected winner days before. This in my humble opinion, humble is unforgivable. It's despicable too. You can disagree with Clinton's positions, but questioning her character, motives, uh, and integrity, integrity is not helpful. Integrity, she has none, and not something we should be doing in the uh, Democratic uh, Party. Uh, 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 yeah, right. Yeah, just vote. Just vote for anybody. Vote for Yosemite Sam. Vote for Foghorn Leghorn, you know, just... I would vote for Foghorn Leghorn. I would vote for any of those cartoon <laughs> characters instead of Trump and Hillary Clinton. Remember, in 1980... Even Elmer Fudd. When I ran against Ronald Reagan in Bergen County, 
Mickey Mouse got more votes than yours truly. <laughs> you mean some people voted for Mickey? Absolutely. I never really cared for rodents. Not just AIDS and abets the Republican nominee. Any animal with buck teeth, I don't like. We Democrats are not perfect, but we <laughs> strive to be the party of fair play and equality in this capitalist society. Fair play and equality. Fair play. Crumbs. Think of those words. Fair crumbs. play. You will get crumbs from Hillary Clinton. A handful, no, not a handful, a few crumbs. A Republican will give you absolutely nothing. Hillary will give you a few crumbs. Maybe, maybe, because our maybe. husband didn't give us any crumbs. He took them away, 1996, with the Welfare Act. You know what? I remember something. Going back in time when Bill Clinton was in office and he was on TV uh, bragging about how, uh, you know, the job market is so stimulated the, and the economy is so stimulated now. And I'm thinking to myself, because I was, I was in the, the job hunting um, um, category, you know, fa belt. phase, conveyor belt, right? Uh, and the only jobs that there were a lot of out there, plentiful, were all the hamburger flipping uh, minimum wage jobs. There, there wasn't, there, were, there weren't any career opportunities. 22 million dog jobs created, but they were crap. In abundance, but they were crap. Yeah. It's like, he's like a car dealer with a disclaimer at the bottom, you know? I mean, come on, big fucking deal. What do you bring to the table for the little guy? Uh, that is the big question. Do you bring something to the table that's going to interest me? I don't no, see it in no, the two-party system. They're going to continue to stop us quo. Yep. Clinton did not rig the primaries. Oh, no. She worked hard and did her homework. In 2008, when President Obama won the nomination by virtue of superdelegates. Clinton didn't blame the process. She didn't try to change the rules in the mid-game. She picked herself up and dusted herself off and started all over again. Boy, this guy really wants to go down on Hillary, huh? Sanders should do the same. You just want Sanders to back off and not obstruct Hillary Clinton's success. He's using psychological uh, 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 tactics to get all the Bernie people to get behind Hillary. Well, when it comes down to it, Bernie made a mistake. It's not running as an independent. He made okay. a mistake of, of uh, jumping off the highest diving board into the Democratic Party, and where he thought he would get, you know, where and he more knew he knew votes he he knew that the uh, that the that the DNC, I believe he knew that the DNC will screw him. Yeah, it wasn't it, it wasn't a perfect uh, decision. Just think of all the stress he would not have right. if he did run as an independent. And just think of all the things he could have brought up against her as an independent. He didn't have to hold back. Exactly. If he wanted to tear into Hillary like he tore exactly. into Alan Greenspan, he could have done so. Yeah. He could have tore into her, my God. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway. All right, I think one more here. One more and we'll break for lunch. I am 95 years old. Nah, he, nah my partner's not that old. I am 95 years hey, old. Hey, where's my, where's my, my, oh, oh, have you, have you seen my wallet with the rubber bands around it? Ooh. I got a lot of expired coupons in there. And I am a World War II veteran. I am also a long-time Republican. Long time. Who plans to vote for Hillary Clinton. 
those goofballs that call radio shows. I'm a long-time fan and a first-time caller. Oh, where do you want a fucking medal for that, buddy? Why vote for Clinton? Well, why not? Another douchebag. <laughs> Frankly, I'm not too impressed by the other candidates. Are you serious? He's not impressed by Bernie Sanders. Who, where do these people come from? Let me guess, New Mouth Jersey. Holes. Huh? Yeah, this is New Jersey. New yeah. Jersey. Yeah. So I was right to post what I posted on all the New Jersey Facebook pages. They are assholes and knuckleheads and imbeciles. While Clinton is warm and fam family oriented. <laughs> oh, this is, this is too funny, man. I don't think he's ever seen one of the debates. I heard Hillary was was evil to the um, um, to the Secret Service when uh, her husband was president. And she was like nasty as all hell, and and she used to go ballistic over everything. People say it's time for a change. Well, then why didn't they vote for Bernie? They don't want to. What does Clinton have to change? Changing nothing. It's like changing. It's like changing your dirty underwear, but picking the exact same pair of briefs. It's it's not real change. No. These people are not ready for real change. They're not ready for the grassroots re revolution at all. I've always said there will be no revolution in America. They don't really. They're af Never. either they're afraid of change, or they're so brainwashed. They're afraid of change, or they're so brainwashed. The adaptive supporters will never rock the boat. They never rock the boat. Because you know there are people out there who told me Bernie Sanders. Oh, he he's a pinko commie. There you go. He's a commie. I, I said, did, did, did you ever read the definition of socialism in in, in the dictionary? Yeah, from now on, when you mention that uh, about social, mention its uh, second name, Utopia. Yeah. Utopia. They don't. They leave out the word democratic socialism. Democratic. They leave that word out. They just say like pinko commie. Yeah. Well, but, but the point of it is, socialism uh, was called utopia. That's what it was looking towards. Well, this couple drives establishing a utopia. Yeah. This couple drives a new Acura, so I would assume if you have money, you're paranoid about subsidizing the po folk. You know they, they and losing your benefits. Yeah, they're 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 um, they don't like to help people yeah. or share anything. If you're driving a brand new Acura sedan. Fully loaded. There's a good chance that you're you're very self-absorbed, self-centered. These are the kind of people who would hit someone in the roadway and ro ro roll off. They would just go on. They would. They would. Leave if them the, if they were, in if, the road. If there was no hidden cameras like we have today, yeah, they'd just take off real quick. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like those people, like in, in India, where you know you. you point out that people don't give a shit and somebody could die right on the street. Hey, they mocked, they, they mocked uh, uh, a guy had fake blood and, and may believe and was pleading with people to, to call the ambulance. We all went Nobody mocked. cared. Nope. This is in, uh, I they think it was, yeah, in, in India. I think it was New Delhi. It was in, yeah. in a major city in India. Nobody cared. No. no. Like I agree. Yeah. It's time for a woman's point of view. Oh, gosh. He really has a thing for Hillary. I think it will be good for our country. Unless it's a woman. It's a good, it'll be good for our country. It'll be good for, not one word about the woman's track record. Ah. Hillary Clinton's track record. Ah. These are not uh, well-informed individuals. No, uh, and it looks like what they see, they don't incorporate. And these are the people who go to the polls uh -huh. and make asinine decisions uh -huh. on who they should vote for. This is what we have. Uh -huh. We're going to break for lunch. You're going to be joined by our 
voiceover artist William Hamilton Morrow III with promo and as well as the uh, How to Defeat a Conservative Bible Verses. Simply hit the pause button, read it, ab study, absorb it, learn from it, and we'll be back. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay. We're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow the third, for doing promo for this show, um, for this post um, grand finale Super Tuesday show. Very disappointed. Ah. Very disappointing grand finale Super Tuesday. Because uh, there was a hell of a lot of burning uh, Sanders momentum going into the last Super Tuesday. Uh -huh. No doubt about that, but he's up against people that ha show no remorse in cheating. <laughs> they, can, they don't mind cheating to win at all. They don't feel bad about it. All right, it's all yours, buddy. Uh, oh, uh, idiotic! I might as well get it out of the way. <coughs> uh, idiotic, um, imbecile. Uh, Sarah Palin uh, made a statement that uh, Muhammad Ali uh, it was proof that black Muslims are violent people. Total the opposite. Yes. She's, Total she's, the opposite. She should, she, she should, her and, and, and Bristol should stay home in Alaska, make moonshine, drink yeah. it, and maybe have sex with a moose. And suck off a, a suck moose. Suck moose yeah. cock or yeah, something. There you go. There you go. Here, here's, here's what she sounds like. Sarah Palin. She makes as much sense as a slide whistle. A former substitute teacher at Manchester Regional High School. And this woman's cute, man. 
faces up to five years in prison oh, yeah, yeah. after pleading guilty on Wednesday to sexting and engaging in sexual activity with underage students. Boys, let me tell you something. I saw her picture. It's like the uh, the teacher, the blonde in uh, um, Florida that was uh, thrown in, in jail. She's doing these young men a huge favor by having sex with them. Let me tell you something. You, you cannot traumatize a, a young boy with raging hormones. There is no way, no how, that you can traumatize these boys with a, with a hot looking chicky poo like that. Linda Take that to the bank. Harden. What's her name? Linda Harden. Harden? Hard. Call it hard on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. If it was all in, that's what it would be. Levity bells. Levity bells. Linda Hardon is what I'm gonna call her. Twenty-two. Oh, twenty-two years old. Oh. Of Prospect Park. Wept in State Superior Court in Patterson as she admitted that she sent sexually explicit photos of herself to a 16-year-old student in November 2014 and performed oral sex with another 16-year-old student. Why couldn't I be seduced when I was that young by a hot-looking teacher? These kids are lucky, man. This, this woman should get a trophy, not thrown in prison. <laughs> She broke these guys in like a baseball glove. Harden said she met both students Hard on. while she was working at the regional high school in Halden. The regional high school in Halden. Answering questions from defense attorney Alyssa Haskup, Harden admitted she engaged in similar sexual activity with a 14-year-old student the same month. Could I have this article when you're done before I, I leave? Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to back up uh, this, this, this this succulent young lady. <laughs> this is this is despicable. That uh, absolutely despicable. That she should go to jail for this. Yes. She said she's hot looking. She met the student while she was working as a substitute teacher at the Halden Public Schools. Boy, I'd stay after class in a flash. Harden was at one point sobbing so hard she was unable to answer questions. Judge Miguel de la Carrara gave her a few minutes to collect herself. Prosecutors had said at the time of Harden's arrest in December 2014 that she, excuse me, that the student in Halden was an eighth grader at the Halden Public School and that she engaged in sex with him after taking him to a location in Patterson. A location in Patterson? Who the hell would want to have sex in a location in Patterson? Yeah. How would you deem it to be safe? Even, you know? <laughs> yeah, somebody, when she was giving oral sex to the kids, somebody would have got it from behind. Anyone 16 years older or older is deemed in New Jersey to be old enough to consent to sex. Oh, oh, old enough for consent. 16. Oh, this, these, these boys were below that? Well, one was 14, one was 16. Okay. And it doesn't say the age of the other one. You know how many, you know how many years of pleasure the 14 year old is going to have at telling <laughs> this story? How Miss Hardon uh, 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 broke her, him in, the substitute teacher. But, the law makes an exception. 
and prohibits adults from engaging in sexual activity with anyone from age 16 to 18 if the adult has supervisory authority over the teen. That sounds a little weird. Well, she was the teacher. So, in other For words, sure. if the kid worked at at Burger King and she and, went and, and picked them and, up, and she had a hot looking, he had a hot looking supervisor at Burger King, and and she could say, uh, you know, it's company policy for me working for Burger King to have it your own way. And oh. I must have my own way with you. you know? I mean, that's what that means. If they if there's if they're a supervisor and they and they they can order you no the opposite if you have a supervisory uh, relationship you cannot have the engage in sex with a 16 or 18 if you don't if you're just a woman on the street yes you can oh is that why oh is is that why like um, teachers get really so much heat for dating the students or even in college they get heat for it yes what about um, I, I know I saw a porno one time about it but could a, could a psychologist or a psychiatrist have sex in the office with a, with a patient not supposed to I saw it <laughs> what the hell is it well name? that's this is what fa this is what fantasy the, the porn books no it was is uh, about. it was the I think she died it was Shauna Grant and, and she was in an office with a, 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 this older man, and he was a psychiatrist, and he had a German accent. He was, yeah, yeah, was, yeah, you must not play with the doctor's memory. Yeah, no, 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 you must. I will take advantage of you, my little one. In other words, she was seducing, but he wasn't pushing her away. So that, that they can't, he could lose his license for being a shrink? Absolutely. Oh, wow. People with supervisory authority include parents, guardians, teachers, tutors, coaches, and priests. Tutors, tooting away, playing the old bagpipes. She was tooting away. What? She was tooting away. She was playing the bagpipes, uh. tooting away. Harden pleaded guilty to one count of second degree sexual assault and two counts of child endangerment. Endangerment, my ass. Well, that's how the law is way behind. It's dangerous. Always. Oh, you're endangering him by breaking him in. Giselle da Silva, a Passaic County Senior Assistant Prosecutor, said the state would recommend a sentence of up to five years in prison as part of the plea agreement. Up to five years. Yes. That's when so Harden completes her prison sentence, she will be subject to registration as a child molester. She's got a perfect last name, but I really feel bad for her. I mean, I do. Oh. Miss Harden, you, uh, well, actually, I got, I'm getting a good look at her. She's no raving beauty. I guess I was so uh, taken by the article. Uh -huh. But still, I mean, she's still, she's not ugly. She's attractive. Harden. Now why couldn't why couldn't it be H A R D O N? Hard because on. That would be just too fitting and funny, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'll be great material for me, but I, oh, I'll my I'll, boy. I'll just I'll still call her Miss Hardon. I mean, nice. Linda was her name. Linda. Linda Harden of yeah. Prospect Park, New Jersey. Yeah, you know what? The kids need a good breaking in. I think I think it's worse if they're young females. Like they throw the, they throw away the key if you're yeah, a male yeah. teacher. If you're oh, a male gym teacher, that's why it's no good to have you know. 
it's good for female gym teachers to teach gym class with females. Oh. Bernie Sanders yeah. had a testy moment with a reporter on Monday when he was asked whether he sees his refusal to cede the Democratic presidential nomination to his rival Hillary Clinton as sexist. Sexist? Sexist? In other words, they're taking that gender card and they're going way overboard with it. Worse than Chuck Todd on MSNBC. The back and forth exchange with Yamichi Alcindor of the New York Times began when she asked the initial question Amici? at a news conference. I'll give you an Amici. But Sanders did not recognize her. After another reporter deferred to her, she asked, What do you say to women who say that you staying in the race is sexist? Because you're standing in a way of what could be the first female president. You see, only concern with making history. The first black man in the White House. The first female in the White House. That's all they care about. Is to make politically correct history. Is that a serious question, Sanders asked? Yeah, think about it. Assured that he wa it was, he continued to say that is sexist to say that if Hillary runs for president, is your point that it is sexist for any man to oppose her? And if you disagree with her, you're, you're, you're a misogynist? In other words, just let her win. Special treatment. You see, this She's is... Defer to her. Let her win. Let her win. Yeah. No. My point is that she has more delegates than you tomorrow. Al Sindor said. Thanks to cheating. Well, that's another point, Sanders interrupted. That if you stay in the race, is it sexist? She finished. I don't think it is sex. I love to punk him out, the South Cinder guy. It's a her. Oh, I, well, ECW used to put women through tables. Extreme Championship Wrestling. Oh, a carpet muncher that wants Bernie to give special treatment to the female Hillary Clinton. Oh, you see now with the selfish agenda of the feminists? Get out! Get out! Get out! Yeah, yeah, you see? They want to be, they want a power mad. They want to be treated special. They want to pass laws that are pro-female and anti-male. I guarantee you. And that's what would happen if it was a Hillary Clinton, Elizabeth Warren ticket. The men, you think your child support payments are high now? I think the issue is, first of all, our focus is on running and winning right here in California. The second point that I have made is that it's absolutely imperative that we defeat Donald Trump as a candidate for President of the United States. I believe that I am the stronger candidate. Uh, could I take that one also? I want to I wanna hammer the crap out of this young lady, you stupid bitch, motherfucker. Hey! How would you like a nice clothesline right to the trope, like Stan the Lariat Hansen? I remember him. Yes, he, he received his uh, official Hall of Fame ring hey, recently, hey. Hall of Fame ring. <clears throat> The writer who claims that criticizing President Obama as being one of the worst presidents in modern times oh, that's ridiculous. is not racist is, of course, correct. He is entitled to his opinion without being accused of prejudice. But 
he is not entitled to his facts. Yes, stick to the facts. Only the facts, man. Only the facts. Joe when Friday. Obama took office, unemployment peaked at 10 percent. The highest it has been since 1983. And look at the debt he inherited. Today, the national unemployment rate is just under 5%. Since Obama took office, the private sector has added some 14 million jobs over 74 consecutive months, the longest period on record. The budget deficit over this period has fallen by one trillion dollars. The country's overall economic growth significantly outperformed that of every other major economy. Could you imagine if G.W. Bush did not do the damage to the economy and, and it stood the way it was, I mean, <laughs> well, just before Mr. G.W. Bush, in 2000, you know what the, the surplus was? What? $125 billion. Wow. There was no deficit. And this, this was just a little... The little picayune, uh, what is it, 39% tax rate on the rich? What did Bill Clinton have on the rich? 39.6. That, that was that. It wasn't even like a Dwight Eisenhower tax rate. It was a Dwight small Eisenhower, one. Dwight Eisenhower, 91%. And, he, and the surplus was that big. And he totally... Wiped it out. Because of big oil and his father's connection with big oil... What's Prescott Bush? Was it Prescott Bush? Prescott Bush. That whole H W. That whole Robert. big oil Bush connection, Bush dynasty connection. He fucked up that surplus with the war. The war, the big tax cut for the rich, and you know, and uh, Medicare Part B. All of this was not on budget. Favoring. It was as part. It wasn't paid for. Favoring Halliburton. It was all deficit. All deficit spending. Hmm. Yeah, I think I have a feeling they that that Ronald Reagan would not be right wing enough today for not the absolutely, Republican absolutely Party. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He would be treated like John Boehner was. Yeah, probably. Or even a John McCain. I'm surprised that John Boehner hasn't come out for an interview and just totally hammered the people that fired him. Yeah. He's been quiet. I'm really shocked. I thought he would be really angry. Wait till somebody offers him a book deal. Or they gotta, of that they gotta love them capitalists, huh? They, gotta, they can't do anything without making a fucking profit. That's it. The country's overall economic growth, I read that already, and some 16 million Americans now have some form of medical coverage that they previously did not have. That is true. Clearly, these benefits have not been spread uniformly, and one can argue over which political party is responsible for that failure. But, if this constitutes one of the worst presidential performances of modern times, I worry about what would be the writer's definition of one of the best. Uh, hey, I haven't forgotten the first two years of Barack Obama's administration, the Democrats had control of the House and the Senate and the Oval Office, and uh, between that and, and, the, and the progressives in the Supreme Court, they could have accomplished a lot in, the, in those first two years, yeah. and they did they didn't do anything for helping the middle class and the poor. They did nothing, nothing, which means that an establishment politician that takes big money 
from the top 1% is no better in a lot of ways than their Republican counterparts. Exactly, it's the both parties. Because you would have seen a lot. We, we could have had a universal health care in those no, two they years. Got, no, no, that's where they, that's where they got Obamacare. No, I mean, in that first I mean, if since the Democrats were in total control, you could have, but they weren't going to go there. In other words, they had to protect the private sector and insurance companies. They couldn't say, bye-bye insurance company, screw you. It's really funny because uh, the insurance companies wrote the damn law and yet the Republicans are against them. How do you figure that out? It's just, it's just upsetting that, that corporations are writing any laws. Exactly. They don't deserve to write they any laws. They have no business <laughs> writing laws, being involved in the government in these ways that they are. Well, it proves. And gaining no subsidies. It proves that the two-party system has just handed over the United States of America. It's all to, one big corrupt cul-de-sac. Oligarch, yeah. It's it's <laughs> a a cul-de-sac. When you look at it from the sky, it looks like a, like a pair of gonads. You know, there's a there's a there's a narrow uh, there's a street. A narrow entrance, it goes into the cul-de-sac, shaped like a sack. And uh, this is the uh, oligarch, the fascist corporate oligarchs, <coughs> states of America that we have right now. They just turned everything over to the scumbag CEOs. Now, I don't know who to blame. Should I blame the CEOs for waving the right... Waving the right amount of money on, under the politician's nose? Should I blame the politician for taking the bribe? Should we blame both? You blame the people for not voting. The people own this government. You know, everybody talks about, we're going to take back our country. No, you never do, you fool. Listen, major elections. You always have the progressive liberals that care about you running under an independent party. I remember when Ralph Nader ran under the Green Party. Uh, I remember uh, you had, last time you had Jill Stein and Rocky Anderson. Mm -hmm. You have choices, but you people either don't vote, which is a vote for a right wing, Republican because uh, crazy people that vote for Republicans always vote. So you intellectual mainstream people and liberals, you don't vote. You talk a lot of shit on the internet, but you don't vote. So you're you're giving votes to the Republican. Now you got two Republicans in, in both parties running against each other. Hillary Clinton and Trump. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, two Republicans. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> you you turn your back on uh, people you should have uh, you should have voted for, like Bernie Sanders, and in case of uh, states like Florida, New Jersey, Wisconsin, what did you what did you people do? You reelected the Republican governors in those states. You had choices. You could have voted them out. You complain about them, but then you reelect them. Mm -hmm. So you people are to blame. I think it was Grover Cleveland that says Americans will, will get the kind of government they deserve. Mm -hmm. well, you got it. We got it. All right. America needs to take a long, hard look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Everyone is appalled by bullying and the disastrous effects it has on our young people. Yet these same people will blindly follow Donald Trump and even delight in his derogatory taunts against people who do not agree with him. Well, the right-wing teabaggers, they love to scapegoat and blame their problems on somebody else, like a group of people. They like to do that. Um, instead of blaming it on the people they elected, people at the top, you know. Yeah. It's like the evangelicals. 
because of gays. Uh, the, the Lord is going to destroy this country. Them dark gay people caused 9-11 to happen. Them dark gay people, gay marriage is going to bring the plagues. The, the flooding in Texas was the result of gay marriage yeah, being allowed. There you hey. go. There you go. And then what else did they say? Oh, the, the, the people of color, uh, whether they be Mexican or, or not, they're all taking our damn dark jobs away from us rednecks. You know, uh, they live out yonder. That is not leadership. Trump fits the bill of all bullies who pretend to be big shots, but in reality are small minded. I am saddened to live in a country where so many equate a vicious tongue with strength of character. Well, yes, he is a um, a bully. He is an e egomaniac. He is spoiled and coddled. Uh, he is sometimes insane. <laughs> but I, I really, I am rooting for Donald Trump to make both Hillary and Billary Clinton cry. I want to see uh, uh, her being torn apart in the worst way, and I think Donald Trump fits the bill for that. And I, I am not voting for Hillary Clinton, ever. All of the politicians on both sides have all but ruined our country and put us in enormous debts. Our freedoms and values are at stake in this election. Donald Trump has my vote. Oh, I know people that love Trump and, and are going to vote for him. I mean... They're, they're crazy about that. I mean, they're nuts. But not all Republicans uh, like him. Uh, Billy Morrow, William Morrow, the, the man you just heard doing promo, he, him and his father were always right wing, but he thinks Donald Trump is, is horrible. That he's, he's destroying uh, politics for the, uh, for the Republican Party, you know, totally destroying the party and he's insane and he's bigoted and he's this and he's that he's he, he can't stand him you know I mean uh, I think John Kasich is the only normal sounding <laughs> Republican unfortunately he wants to do away with your Social Security oh he wants to privatize Social Security I don't know if he wants to privatize it but he wants to do, do away, away. so he, yes. he's a kinder he's a soft-spoken demon that wants to uh, put you in the gutter. There you go. He just doesn't yell like Chris Christie and Donald Trump. Yeah. He softly says, I want to screw you, exactly. poor people. Trump is not perfect, but no president is. <laughs> that, that, that's some excuse for, for Donald Trump, right? <laughs> <laughs> I admit that sometimes he makes some statements that could have been said better. <laughs> but his heart is always in the right place. Oh, really? He has a heart. Make America great again. We need a businessman who is not beholden to lobbyists. He will get the best person for each job. Yeah, he speaks his mind. He don't owe nobody anything. He speaks his mind. He say he certainly cannot be any worse than President Obama. Oh, really? Right now, Trump is focused on jobs and the economy. That is what most Americans are worried about. So, so they're blaming Obama for the lack of jobs and the poor economy. They forget that they re-elected a Republican Congress and Senate, but that doesn't count. Okay. We want our kids to have a good future, and I, for one, will be very glad to see political correctness disappear. He is more deserving than Hillary Clinton. Just look at her constant lying and the email disaster. She has never created one single job. She is out of touch with the middle class. I am very willing to give Trump a chance. 
Give Trump a chance. Give Trump a chance. Make America great again. The WWE has Bob Backlund doing that. Make you great again. He's, he's doing it. Make the WWE great again? No, this wrestler. He's trying to. He's his life coach, and he's 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 did trying you, to copy Donald Trump. Did you see that one uh, video where uh, Donald Trump was shaving McMahon's head? Yeah, he won. He won a match with him, and and the loser gets his head shaved. <laughs> Trump won that match. Yeah, somehow. What the hell? It was one of the WrestleManias, I think. Come on, give me a break. Yeah, you know, uh, Vince McMahon is jacked up, man. I, I don't, I, I don't see Donald Trump really beating Vince McMahon. No, because it was all fake. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, Donald Trump has a heart. Now he, now I know he has a heart. I never knew that. Bernie Sanders vowed to soldier on to the contested Democratic National Convention. Might despite get, might get messy. projections that Hillary Clinton will reach the 2383 delegates necessary for the party's nomination well, after polls close in New Jersey. Well, of course. She's the projected winner days before Super Tuesday. She's the best puppet the oligarch ever had. The Vermont senator said media projections expected to dub Clinton the presumptive nominee are simply not accurate. He's too nice to everybody. I'm telling you. Because they include superdelegates. Elected officials and party leaders who will not cast their votes until the convention. In July, Sanders hopes superdelegates will desert Clinton for him. In terms of delegate math, I think there is some confusion in the media, Sanders said. It is extremely unlikely that Secretary Clinton will have the requisite number of pledged delegates to claim victory on Tuesday night. Well, super delegates, they have not technically voted. That's correct. Yet. That is correct. And, and there is a, a chance of flipping. That is correct also. Sanders said the De Democratic National Convention should prepare for a contested convention. That means that Bernie is not willing to fold, to fold like a cheap camera and just hand everything over to the woman. The, 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 well, that's how it is now, but we will see. The poor little lady. He might have had a lot of pressure. On uh, what was it Friday meeting with Obama? Well, Obama's on his way out, so I don't, I I I do not. Um, he has no right to try to um, control the Sanders campaign. Well, he's going to be out there, for, you know, campaigning for Hillary. I know. So. I know. might have had a nice little talk with Mr. Sanders and says, all right, we'll give you this, we'll give you that. Get out. Make it easy on her. You never know. Well, he's protected. He's, hold he's trying to get the FBI to hold back, you know. No, I don't think the FBI, maybe the FBI or maybe they're puppets of the oligarch too. You know, I mean, uh, in some ways they probably are. I don't know. I don't know what they said. It's taking too damn long. That's all I'll say. I don't know what they said during the meeting, but uh, there's no just because Barack Obama is the president, it doesn't mean you have to fall like a cheap camera and just give up on the masses of people that love you and that want that that are Bernie or bust. Uh. And 
there's a there's more than you think. You know, so Saturday's press conference mirrored one Sanders had in Washington on May the first, following his losses in Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Delaware, and Maryland. At the time, Sanders said it was unfair that only seven percent of delegates, <coughs> excuse me, had backed his campaign when he had won approximately 45 percent of the pledged delegates. Since then, Sanders has made the case repeatedly in interviews, at rallies, that superdelegates which should support him based on his strength in a run against presumptive Republican nominee Donald Trump. He is very clear that Donald Trump's negative ratings are enormously high, unprecedented for a major party presidential candidate, and Secretary Clinton's negative ratings are also very, very high. Yeah, but um, if you're cheating, it uh, doesn't matter how much the people hate you. You know, if you're, uh, you got the media and the oligarch and the DNC behind you, you know, rigging things. Uh, they said, they said they, they sensed that something fishy was going to go on in California, and it did. It's still, I, I think they're still counting votes. It's a big state. Yeah. Clinton, meanwhile, campaigned in California targeting Trump with a speech in San Diego. She previewed her intention to mount an aggressive campaign against the real estate mogul. In it, she said, Trump would lead the nation toward war, an oh, economic she, crisis. She's a warmonger. She's a she's a bona fide warmonger. Yeah. She's um. Iraq is a great business opportunity. You know. Um, she has to campaign aggressively against Donald Trump because you know Donald Trump is going to bring the big guns, big cannons, blasting. Donald Trump is not going to be a, a nice gentleman like Bernie Sanders was during the debates. Uh, you know, like Madam Secretary, with all due respect, give me a break. She don't deserve that that treatment. Clinton said that electing Trump would be a his historic mistake. I think it's time to judge Donald Trump by his words and his deeds. I think his words and his deeds disqualify him from being president. His deeds? Nobody has any more dishonest, heinous, despicable deeds than Hillary Clinton. She's only, she only became senator and secretary of state because of her husband. If it wasn't for her husband winning two terms and, she, you know, she wouldn't have a political career. You know, got a light one to, to end the show? Last one, change of pace. Tomato paste. I am in a happy relationship with a wonderful man. That's what she says. Our, yeah, <coughs> our life is great together. You should see some of the palookas these girls are involved with. Ugly as hell. And I wouldn't want it any other way. I have one issue, however. I like to look at lesbian porn. Oh. Okay. Maybe a few times a week. I think that would lead for a uh, third party uh, carpet muncher to join them in their bed. I don't actually want to be with another woman. That's what she says now. It's just a fantasy of mine. <sighs> Is this wrong? Should I tell my boyfriend? I don't know 
if I'm making too much out of this, or if there are other women out there who are in the same situation. Well, I think her husband is going to uh, be, f out of fairness, I think her husband's going to want to bang the other woman if she if she has her come in the bed. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're doing a woman. I have to bang her. You got you know, got to play fair. Here is dear Abby's take. Your Abby wants to join them, jump in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she could be the other woman. She could be the other woman, right? Books what? have been written. Books have been written. About the varied sexual fantasies women have. Yours is not unusual. And you shouldn't feel guilty about it. Hey, young boys have fantasies about their hot-looking substitute teachers. I know that for a fact. And some of them get it to come true. Some of them have it come true. <laughs> Come <laughs> true, C-U-M. Oh, oh. <laughs> Nothing compels you to share your fantasy with your boyfriend unless you feel a need to. But if you do, don't be shocked if he finds it a turn on. Oh, yeah. It's like the Seinfeld episode uh, when... Uh, uh, he wanted to get out of a relationship with a girl, and, and I guess George told him to mention menage a trois to get her to piss her off so she dumps him. Well, and then she turned lesbian afterwards. No, he's no her. No, she uh, was Didn't she George was in on she liked it. Yeah, Something like that. She turned lesbian afterwards. Did, did no, they, not that one. That was Susan. No, 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 no. Yeah, that was George. Girlfriend. Yeah. No, there was a thing she where you know uh, they were trying, trying to you know gracefully get out of a relationship yeah. by thinking that if you mention Menage a Trois, that the woman will get angry and then that'll be an easy way to break it off. But it turned out the woman liked the idea. Going for it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you never know. This, this could, this could, uh, uh, this could bite her right on the ass. This fantasy. Because many men also fantasize about women having sex together. Listen, she brings another chick in the bed and the chick is going down on her. He's going to want to bang the other woman from behind Ooh. and vice versa. Ooh. Ooh. Vusa, what did Archie Bunk used to say? Versa Vusa? Versa Vusa? I don't know. I don't know. He used to change the Vusa, pronunciation Vusa. for everything. <laughs> hey, little Goyle. Oh, no, he told me, hey, don't worry. Uh, uh, he was going to read the Bible for, say, grace for Thanksgiving. Don't worry. God will keep the food warm. Anyway, what is, what is the whole take? Is that the Abbey that is saying it. that... Uh, the man will, might, might enjoy it. He might say, whoa, yes. Oh, yeah, well, you know... Uh, me, I could care less, but you know, fantasies are very uh, individual. There, there are many, many fantasies, and uh, you know, I, I never had any um, anything bizarre per se. There are many stories. But there are many stories. In the naked city. Yes, that this is. has been one. Okay. You know, I mean, where they where they begin, how they start, the fantasies, who knows? I mean, I don't know. Um, there are, that's why there are special genres of pornography. Uh -huh. There's pornography uh, of women with big bushes, women that don't buzz, because men like the big, huge uh, tumbleweed. Fur pie. The fur pie, they want the big uh, tumbleweed there. You know, and that's a fantasy. Some men actually like to bang fat chicks. Of course, the chick has a pretty face and big breasts, you know, but some men like that. Some men, uh, there's all kinds of strange fantasies that's out there. There's no amounting, 
I mean, accounting for taste. Yeah, yeah, right. That's why you have all the different. Some people like cilantro. Uh, oh, you don't care for it? Hell no. You know, it has a um, a rather uh, obnoxious uh, odor, uh, overpowering it. Tarragon. The, the herb tarragon. Cilantro is actually from China. China it's called Chinese parsley. You know, it's very good for detoxifying uh, heavy metals from the blood. Ooh cilantro juice. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us for this week's progressive discussion. And the, right on, Bernie. The post final grand finale Super Tuesday show. Post Super Tuesday show for the last Super Tuesday. And uh, don't give up on Bernie. Um, if he runs as an independent, you could vote for him. If something goes wrong, you can write him in. But don't give up on him. Um, no, um, uh, I hope, I hope that something happens where the FBI comes to their senses and uh, really comes down on Hillary Clinton. They're taking too friggin' long. They're taking too long. Now, Anonymous supposedly any day now is going to lower the boom on Hillary Clinton. I hope that happens. Because if they, if, you know, they'll put their video on YouTube. If there's a tell-all video, it, it'll go viral and, you know, even if the mainstream media doesn't say anything about it, uh, they will be forced to say something because you know, if something goes viral that massively, it kind of like spills over to mainstream media. Hopefully. You know, eventually, but it's got to be like, you know, in the millions, Hopefully. in the millions of hits, views. Mm. All right, we'll see you. And again, shame, shame, shame on you. Um, shame in, on you. in honor of uh, Sean Morrison, shame on you. Um, uh, what's her name? Uh, <clears throat> Elizabeth Warren for selling out your so called buddy Bernie Sanders. No more, officially, there are no more progressive Democrats left. <laughs> That's it. All corporatists, both sides of the fence. There you go. All right, bye bye. The end times countdown is here. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. Great song. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.